when we were together in, in that four and a half year period, as, as, as has been said before, uh, that kind of encompassed 20 years of living a normal life with another uh, human being. I met Elvis on uh, July 6th, 1972, not to be too specific. It was after midnight. He used to lease out the Memphian Theater when uh, the theater would close because he was Elvis and he couldn't go into a normal theater. So he would lease out the theater and run movies all night. Elvis did not ask to sit next to me, or, nor did he ask me to come and sit next to him. George Klein had sat next to me in the theater, and George got up to go get popcorn, I thought, but when he came back, it wasn't George Klein anymore, it was Elvis. <laughs> so Elvis came and plopped down next to me and you know, started doing the old stretch, yawn thing, put the arm around me. <laughs> and I was under the assumption that he was still married, so I was very unfriendly, and he finally said, honey, you know I'm not married anymore, don't you? And I said, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> She had this offbeat comedy about her. She had a great sense of humor, and I think that's what really Elvis liked. And Elvis uh, liked the fact that uh, she was attractive and that uh, she was a local girl. She was a Memphis girl, and he liked that. We really knew each other right away. The moment I met him, it's like, okay, I've known this person for a long time because I was raised the same way he was. And so we shared a, a real tight bond right away. Linda Thompson was kind of a professional beauty queen. She was gorgeous, she was blonde, she was dazzling. She also had a great sense of humor. Elvis really liked women who, who laughed a lot. And she was also kind of a take charge woman. And it's funny, Elvis really couldn't accept that in Priscilla, but he was willing to accept it in Linda Thompson. Linda Thompson was a wonderful human being. She was really there for Elvis when he needed her after the breakup of Priscilla. She was great. Elvis and Priscilla finalized their separation by divorcing in 1973, nearly a year after Elvis learned of Priscilla's affair with her karate teacher, Mike Stone. He had been deeply, deeply hurt by what he perceived as Priscilla's betrayal of him and having another man involved was all the more painful. It would have been one thing if she had said, I don't like your lifestyle, but having another man involved was tremendously destructive to his ego and to his perception of relationships and marriage. And I think the, the next person who comes in typically suffers the consequences of the prior person's actions. Elvis loved Priscilla very much at one time, but Elvis, would grow out of love. He loved Linda Thompson. But other than him having his daughter, Lisa Marie, there was no reason for Elvis to have ever been married because he belonged to the women of the world. He really did. I don't think that he was bitter about women and about relationships in general. I mean, he was a very romantic, loving, nurturing, affectionate person and naive in many ways. So I think he still believed in marriage. In the years that I was with Elvis, particularly the first year, I feel as if I, I was with him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I feel that way because basically I was. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I slept with him, I ate breakfast with him, I ate lunch with him, I ate dinner with him, I traveled with him, I went to every show that he performed. Um, I sometimes went to the bathroom with him, you know, I, if he showered, I was in there. We were together, though, for almost four and a half years, and there were periods in that four and a half years where we would talk about getting married, having babies, what we would name our children, um, if we'd like to have a boy or a girl, how many of each, and that kind of thing. So, you know, when you're with someone and you live with someone that long, certainly the subject comes up. He was doing the whole Vegas thing, which is a rough life, Vegas and Tahoe and that kind of stuff. And Linda was kind of there to keep him together during it all. And she sort of basked in the, in, in the spotlight herself during that era. Very tight. I mean, she went with him on all the tours and everything. So he never took Priscilla on tours with him. But he took Linda on tour. You know, she was a girlfriend. He could have had other girls out there join him on tour. She was the only one with him for, for a long time there. When we were together, in, in that four and a half year period, as, as, as has been said before, 
uh, that kind of encompassed 20 years of living a normal life with another uh, human being, with a, a regular spouse that would go to work and you know you would have spaces in your togetherness. We didn't when we were together just solidly. Linda w was, uh, I think, good for Elvis. Uh, she spent too much money, I think, which Elvis even said that. He said, but it was his fault. He spoiled her. But Linda did take care of it. When he had his facelift, I went to the hospital with him. When he went to the hospital uh, twice and he was there for two weeks, I had a hospital bed brought into the room and I was adjacent to his bed. I mean, he insisted that I be there with him. And if he elevated his bed, guess what? My bed was elevated too. I was aware of the fact that if Elvis were not with me, there was a darn good chance he was going to be with somebody else because he did not like to be alone. Elvis loved women, you know. He loved women. I mean, he used to, there would be one upstairs coming in and one downstairs going out. He said he'd keep them in a holding pattern. <laughs> the first year we were together, that was not the case. We were together literally 365 days. You know, I mean, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean. It, the hours that he wasn't sleeping, uh, that I wasn't sleeping, I had my eye on him, so I know he couldn't have been with anyone else. But after that first year, I think he grew a little restless. And it was very difficult to reconcile that in my mind and because I was very faithful to him and, you know, had saved myself for this kind of relationship. And to see the person that you love that deeply and devotedly wander off and you know they're going to be with someone else was very hurtful. He would come back to me after having been with another girl, and oftentimes it was just to have the company. He didn't always sleep with these girls. He didn't always have sex with them. In fact, very often he didn't. We were about to go to bed, and I looked on the nightstand, and, and there was all this medication, and I said, have you been ill? And he said, well, why do you ask? And I said, well, there's a lot of prescription medicine there. Are you sick? And he said, oh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, I had a little, uh, I had a little bout with the flu, but, um, you know, and he made up some story. I noticed that his behavior, you know, was a little strange uh, in the evening, like he would get groggy. And I thought, is he just really tired? I was, I was so stupidly naive that it took me, you know, a, a couple of weeks to catch on to what was really happening, that he was taking uh, prescription medication to sleep and then more prescription medication to wake up, and it had become a vicious cycle. He would always come back and say, honey, nobody can compare to you. I, I met this girl, and you might hear about it later, but I want you to hear it from me first, you know, because nothing happened, and I don't feel about her the way I feel about you. I love you, and there's nobody else. I finally came to terms with it and understood that, you know, he is Elvis, he is sequestered, in this little tight-knit group of people. He never sees people from the outside. He's with me all the time. He's got to get a little restless and bored. You know, there's a part of him that was very sincere and loved me as he loved no other. But he did love other people, too. My relationship with Elvis ended kind of slowly. As I grew up, as I matured, as I became wiser to the ways of the world and to the ways of his world, particularly, you know, I, I came to realize I didn't want to live that way for the rest of my life. I didn't want to have a child with someone who slept all day and was awake at night like a vampire's existence. It became depressing to me. He was also self-destructive. In 1976, November, they parted ways. Elvis said, look, I know that I'm not in love with Linda. I love her. She's a great person, but I know it's not going to go anywhere else. And I know what she wants, and I know she wants marriage. It's not going to happen. The last time I saw him alive, I, I left him in San Francisco. Tried as it may sound, left my heart in San Francisco, but it's true. He was about to play the Cow Palace, and he had brought in Ginger Alden, the girl that he would date after I left. And he had begun to date her already, and I knew she was there because I wasn't stupid. <laughs> and he was saying goodbye to me, and I was going back to Memphis, and he said, now, honey, no matter what you ever hear, no matter what anybody ever tells you, there is nobody but you in my life and in my heart, and I love you and nobody else. I think it got to a point, like anything, you know, that 
after a while you can get tired of something like this and you know that you're not being sincere to them only that you got to say hey there's, there's no future here and uh, so uh, they left uh, they parted in, uh, in good terms when you love someone that much it's very very difficult to sit by and watch them self-destruct and more than the other women more than the lifestyle more than anything else I think that's what propelled me away from him because I, I, I didn't want to be there I, I didn't want to wake up and find him dead I believe if it, Linda had been there that morning, he might not have died. She would have heard him fall because she didn't take sleeping pills and would have gone over and, and moved him over on his back and he might possibly be alive today. I was able to leave with still a good feeling. I loved him, he loved me, and there was someone else in the wings that he was going to see and I felt, I was hoping he'd be okay. He was very much a little child at heart, which was you know, accountable for his charm. I mean, he, he was the most adorable, endearing, vulnerable soul in many, many ways.